We'll start off today here up at the top right hand side, well, middle kind of right hand side. And I'm going to paint in a sunset. Now, we're doing something just a little bit different today. I'm going to be doing, a, this is a painting of like the Smoky Mountains and sunset. There's not a lot of these paintings um, that I at least, I don't see them done all the time. So hopefully you'll find this interesting. I'm not copying uh, any one photo because I don't have any photos that I've personally taken of this area. So rather than uh, copying a photo, I'm just kind of taking basic inspiration from several photos. And you can actually look online, just type in the Smoky Mountain, Sunset, Sunrise, something like that. And you'll see what I'm drawing inspiration from. Hey, before we go too far and before I forget, let's look at the paintings that you guys did of the last one. Always fun to see what you're up to. So definitely, if you get a chance, do your version of this painting. And, uh, and I'll get it in the next video if I see it in time. One thing I will add here with the uh, with this kind of sunset, and if you do any research on it, you'll see for whatever reason, they often have these long stringy clouds. Don't ask me why, but they certainly do. And that's just exactly how I'm going to paint it. All right, now I'm working in a little bit of purple, just a, a light purple here, nothing too crazy. And I'll just go down to my red. I won't get too much into the yellow because that'll kind of make a, a muddy color and I don't want that. Not here, it's fine. Actually, some other places, the, the purple and the yellow, yellow together are very pretty. Uh, just not, not right now. I'm just gonna put in these little stringy clouds starting, of course, with the highlight. There, well, actually not of course. I wouldn't start, of course, with the highlight. You could just as well start with the shadow. Today, I choose to start with the, uh, with the highlight, yes. Just very simple, stringy, long clouds. Actually, these clouds span pretty well the length of the sky. Now, they won't all be this color as they go this way. Of course, they'll get darker, but that works. Subtle. Is it subtle? Yes, it's, it's definitely subtle. And subtle is fine for this today. I don't think we really need anything that's overly punchy that is in size. I'm not talking color. I'm talking size, you know, like, oof. That's what I'm trying to say. And I've got kind of a purpley tone, something very similar to up there. And I'm going to begin to put in the shadows in these clouds. Okay, up in here a little. Now this purple, disclaimer, <laughs> is very red. Very red. What that does is it prevents muddying colors. Too much of that, too much of a blue in your purple will cause issues. The only way this is going to be interesting and not terribly boring is to have these nuances in here. This is critical. I'm telling you, if you don't get anything else on the sky but this one thing, you must have what I'm talking about. Are, I see a little yellow. I see a little orange. I see a little, um, I see a little bit of my purpley pink and I've got, it's all broken up. There's no big stripes. Everything here, the largest color stripe that you see is about an inch long. Anything longer, like if you if you go too big and too solid, it's going to look very boring, very flat and very uninteresting. So break it up, have gaps, smaller things. It's like if you're doing a tree, you don't want five leaves on it. You want 5000 leaves. This is the idea here. I'm not saying that those big wispy clouds don't work, but they they do work. I'm not saying that they don't work. <laughs> Here's what I'm saying. I'm saying they don't work right here. I've got kind of a very bright white going on here on the three quarter brush the white and the yellow actually. Don't have to have three quarter brush. The filbert brush should be fine. But right here, you can see where we're going with this. A little sun right here. A lot of slippery wet paint on it. That's a lot of paint for me. I usually don't see mud <laughs> mixing like that on my canvas, but blender brush. The more paint you have, the faster it tends to blend. There. So now I'm gonna paint in. The first of the mountains it was a very quick sky. I mean, that sky was fast. We're talking <laughs> 10 minutes, if that. And I was kind of going slow up here. 10 minutes of painting. There we go. I'm just gonna bring in a little, you know, because all we're painting today is mountains. We might as well, <laughs> might as well do them well. <laughs> so I'm gonna go slow. I'm gonna just bring in all these colors. Up and through here is going to be a, a peak. This will actually start to come out of the red. I won't have the red there so much. The red will just remain right there, really. But I'm kind of more or less using it as a sketching color at this point because I could always uh, blend it into the sky. I like my mountains to come up like this. 
as I work down lower, I can transition into the, um, the blue tones. So that's just exactly what this is right here. Just still purple, but now it's purple to the blue side. And I'm placing that right along here. To, don't get so carried away that it goes right up. And I'm, I'm telling myself this more than you really. Don't, don't go up in here too much and lose my purple, but even my red, but that looks pretty good. Color is very, very critical. And this is, helps the whole thing to tie together with color. And as we go over here, more blue, more blue, more blue, quite a lot of blue, to tell you the truth. It would not be a bad idea to wipe this area. I'm gonna probably do that off camera here. Um, just wipe that off with a shop towel, and then we'll paint our paint our mountain on top, because I don't want this blue to become green. I mean, not that green's really a problem. I mean, it's tree-covered mountain, but still, nah, nah we, we don't really want too much greenery this minute. All right, so that's cleared off. And uh, it's just good. I, I had a lot of paint in this background just because I knew I, I didn't have any trees or anything over this really. So I was just careless with the background on purpose. I, it just, I didn't care. That is care about how much paint I put on because it just wasn't critical. I didn't have much cloud action and usually it matters. 99.9% .9 of the time it matters, but just not today. This is slightly different. This needs to be fairly solid in color actually. I don't want too many variations in this particular mountain because that would make it appear too close. So I'm going to really smoosh it in. Make sure it's kind of all one color right here for the most part. There, you know, then if you want to get a little, a little more blue as you again come away down into the shadow, that's okay, but just we'll make sure it's a soft transition. I'm going to continue here and you, as you'll see I've just darkened my color added a little more red the red is good I'm, I'm keeping the red toward the top of the mountain and it kind of transitions more into blue now what I'm doing is just more or less I guess just establishing my my ridge lines so that come up and down here a little bit more and then you know especially this one, potentially that one, we need to come back and begin to work in some form of detail, but I'm not there yet. If I could do a little bit more here and kind of get this more established, I think it'll be easier. I think it'll be better in the long run. So that's just exactly what I'm going to do. Working in slowly. This is dry, so it takes a lot of work to cover it, but that's all I'm doing. I'm just covering it a little more with a little bit more layering. See this? And right up in here, a little bit more layering. There, that'll work. So before we go too much further, and I was getting ready to kind of do some real dark ones, I think before we do anything down here, let's begin to place in just a little light, um, just muddying kind of, uh, muddying a color. What am I doing? I've got red, I've got a little yellow, some of my purple. It's kind of like a muddy, warm color. I think that'll be okay for starters. If it looks terrible, we will quickly abandon it <laughs> and do something else. But I'm just gonna place on here just the feeling, the touch here, a little bit of subtle color. Now, of course, you're gonna start with your, with your warmer tones here in the middle. You'll work out to your darker, cooler tones. Kind of a highlight, but still very much in shadow. I don't want, you know, I don't want a lot of detail here. If this was another kind of painting, if I wasn't trying to replicate something, um, a specific area, I would probably make tall trees. But down here, I will do some tall trees. It's just the sake of, of the actual scenery. The trees don't tend to be very visible on the mountains that are furthest away, which I mean, I guess makes sense. But I don't know. <laughs> I like big trees on my mountains, at least a little bigger. This is what it is, though, right? We're just going to roll with it. Yeah, it's looking very subtle. I want to do as many color changes as possible. I don't want too much color in the shadow, but I do want a lot of variety of color. Warmth at the top here, cooler at the bottom, and all of, you'll notice all of my misty areas are cool to match the top of the sky there. All right, that's pretty good for now, I think. I'm just adding, I mean, really not adding any paint, just grabbing the paint, kind of moving it around. It just does these extremely subtle things. I think subtlety is, is kind of important here. So there you go. Okay, now, as for this area, we more or less sketched it out. I may bring it up, I don't know, we'll see. 
It needs to be fairly dark. There's my black, which is sliding down. Uh, yes, there's some, some more red and blue. So I got black, red, and blue. That's blue also. There we go. All right, let's, uh, that's actually, that's totally dark. I don't think I want totally dark yet. Let's lighten that up just a little. And some more red. Well, I couldn't even tell what color it is. Now we can see the color in it. Oh, that's good stuff. Red is good. Red is a foreground color. Oh, that's good. That's, that's fine right there. And I still have the ability to go about one or two shades darker. And I think that's important. So now I'm just going to fill this area in. <laughs> it's just like you saw me do before. It's a little bit repetitive painting, but that sort of just goes with it today, doesn't it? Just the way it is. Get the, get the shape the way you like it. Okay. And then raise up a little. You can do it with filbert brush or with fan brushes. Raise up a little. Details. Fairly straightforward, at least right now. We'll add, of course, other colors and stuff mixed in here. Well, now I've got the three quarter brush. And this is actually, this isn't black. This is a mix of black, red, and blue. And not that that's really critical, but if it mixes, well, when it does mix a little bit with what's above it, it'll at least have a color versus just being totally solid black. Make sure there's enough red in it because a black and blue will just kind of make a weird green. So make sure there's plenty of red in it. That's what I'm doing right now. Now, I'm using a three quarter brush for one reason, because it's so soft, it'll leave a smoother brush stroke. What does that smoother brush stroke do for me? Well, it reflects light differently because I am doing this painting for you to see <laughs> through the camera. It, it to me makes sense. You know, I, I need my brush strokes, especially in the dark areas. And I talked about this before. I think I talked about it last week. Your brush strokes will catch whatever light source you're using and it will reflect in different ways. So it'll, something will be black and it could look dark or it could look not dark depending on the brush stroke and how it's reflecting the light. And so all that being said, <laughs> that's why I'm using this. Use the filbert brush or anything else you want to do. But I don't know about you. I'm excited. I'm excited to not be doing this. <laughs> I'm so tired of painting little trees. Oh, this is good stuff. I'm just creating little shrubs and bushes and stuff right here at the very closest part of the foreground. Over here, we'll do the trees though. Well, now it's time to get a little bit of a tree action going up here. I really should use my detail brush for this and I probably will swap to that here in just a little while, but I want this to be extremely sharp. And so I'm continuing to use this three quarter brush for the sharpness, just because it's a synthetic brush, it will be much sharper than, um, than, a, than a natural bristle brush. You could use a natural bristle brush here in, in addition to this, that would be okay. But I want that sharpness, why? Because this is, we don't have a lot of depth. I mean, it's hard to say, you know, we have all these layers, but there's not a lot of like, there's not a lot of tree big, like, medium sized to it's small and then really big. So I want this contrast of fuzziness and sharpness to be very distinct, very intense. I want you to really notice the thought that, oh, it is very sharp and the other stuff is very fuzzy. There you go. Just a little taller. Just a few more branches. Anyway, I'm going to go slow. It's, <laughs> it's one of my only two trees today of any real substance. So I'm going to, I'm just going to enjoy them. So I'm not going to get to paint, <laughs> paint another tree till next time. And I haven't really done hardly anything this time. So I'm going to make it a good tree. How's that? Now to end here, I'm going to just add in a few of my last little limbs. You can see I just sort of kept on going, added a little tiny tree there, a little more over here. Not a whole lot. Kind of keeping it simple. I don't want to fill it in. I think the emptiness, I think the, the space, the negative space in the painting is beautiful. We don't want to mess it up by overcrowding it. And you know what I'm talking about. We've all overcrowded paintings before. And so I didn't want to do that. Sometimes it's hard to help. Sometimes you don't know it until you've already done it. <laughs> That's okay. It's okay. There. That's pretty good. Just some details. I, I think it benefits from details. You don't have to go overboard, but you can if you want to. Either way, I think it's probably okay. I think you can go overboard here. And it won't really be a big deal. I think, I think some detail here would help. 
Well, that about wraps it up for today. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing this one. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button that helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired. Mm -hmm.